Oh. Hey everybody, Garrett Claridge here. Today we're going to be checking out speakers from systems I like to call the home theater in a box. I'm sure you know what I mean. It's typically a system where you have a DVD or Blu-ray player and then a bunch of these little satellite speakers in a subwoofer. It might be 5.1, it might be 7.1, it might be who knows. They have all sorts of options for these little systems. And uh, typically it all tends to fit in a little box that you can throw in your cart at Walmart. <laughs> so the whole idea behind this home theater in a box thing is that you have this all-in-one unit that you can quickly set up surround sound, upgrade your TV speakers, and really, if you set these things up right, they can sound alright. They're pretty good sometimes. It really depends. A lot of these do have very minimal settings for things like you know, distance on the rear speakers and all that. I have to admit some of these have impressed me in the past, but usually they really do lack in the high frequencies. You can probably tell all these speakers are full range except for this center speaker here and this one. So really the selection I have of stuff is all over the place here. but. Of course, the common theme is home theater in a box junk. So this should be pretty fun. We have nine subwoofer drivers to mess with. This one here is actually not from a home theater in a box. I was using it in one of my DIY boom boxes and I think I half blew it up. So this one's just a bonus. All right, so I think I'm going to clear the bench off and we can look at our fighters one by one. So this is a Samsung powered subwoofer. You got a bottom firing driver and a port. A lot of dust on here. Or, uh, I don't know what that is. It's like feathers. <laughs> Maybe someone had a bird. <laughs> Wait a second. There's no way to plug this in. Oh, I just realized there's some lights on the top. Standby and link. This thing's from a wireless soundbar or something. <laughs> yeah, it was from a really nice Samsung soundbar. Now, what was funny is I bought most of these speakers from the thrift store the other day. They finally opened the thrift stores back up in my area of Canada after that lockdown thing. And... When I went into the thrift store, there's the typical stuff like all this plastic junk. I don't usually buy stuff there because it's kind of expensive. Take this for example. Ugh. This was 13 bucks and then tax. So, well, <laughs> that's not, it would have been all right if it was a active subwoofer I could have used. Now, what's funny is when you're at the thrift store, they label this stuff separately, right? So this was 13 bucks. So maybe it said 13 bucks on the sound bar and they were labeled separately. Someone bought the sound bar and forgot the subwoofer. <laughs> How exciting is that? I get to blow up someone's woofer. They're probably going back every day looking for. <laughs> now this subwoofer here, I'm curious what's going on in this thing. It's very heavy. I will give it that. I'm not sure if there's one or two drivers in here because at the back there is two inputs. That could also be for a dual voice coil driver as well, but I've never seen one wired with two separate wires like that. Pretty interesting. The big note on these, grills are not removable. I'll see about that. <laughs> Maybe later. Okay, let's see what's next. Here's the cheapest of the Samsung subwoofers and actually these two drivers over here both these drivers are out of the same kind of cabinet as this. These were out of my parts bin and I'm not even sure why I saved them. But you know what? They're going today. It's just kind of funny that I have the exact model of subwoofer that I took apart to get those. 
Actually, this is the subwoofer that comes with the little silver dust capped speakers over here. Yeah, same speaker driver in there. <laughs> RCA. <laughs> so this one must be built like a sealed ported sort of thing where you get a sealed half and then the other half is exposed to this port. I believe there's a red light on here too. Now these two drivers, I'm not too sure where I got these, but they were another thing out of the parts bin and I just don't need them. <laughs> hey, let me know in the comments if you can figure out what these woofers are out of. So the final subwoofer to mess with is this old classic. It is a legend. <laughs> this is made in the Philippines, 150 watts max. I forget how old this thing is. So as I was saying before, I think I blew this halfway. It was still making noise, but it was very uh, scratchy. <laughs> I had a couple too many beers and turned it up a bit too much on my little boombox system. So this is just the extra little fun we get to have today. How about these? <laughs> These are from LG, little speaker pods. Now these things, they actually look pretty cool, but they sound terrible. <laughs> Samsung, they went with that other subwoofer, the cheaper one. So the center has a tweeter and two smaller drivers. These guys are just full range, like four inches. This one's probably like a three inch. These things are actually kind of fun. I sort of didn't want to blow them up, but I don't really care. <laughs> I don't need them. They just, they're kind of fun to play with. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's like Legos, but with little freaking speakers. You can make a little techno stack. <laughs> so this thing, oops, oops, <laughs> upside down. It looks like a sound bar for a TV. Well, I guess technically is, but what we have here is three separate chambers, left, right, and center in one stupid plastic speaker. It's full range and ported, but I'm not sure if the cabinets are actually separated or not. Kind of funny how the wiring works too, where you get these three separate inputs and you have to sort of spider web the wiring so it goes to the center here and goes down one place. Man, I picked up a lot of these, didn't I? The last one I have to mess with here is something I found very damn interesting. I just couldn't leave it there even though it was like eight dollars for just this stupid plastic center channel. Uh, there was something about it that caught my eye. It is ported. It has a tweeter on one side, uh, like on the very, very end. So not only is the driver really long and like oval shaped, it seems to have two voice coils for one cone. So that's, you know, that's, that's going to be really weird to check out. I've never seen that in my life, but pretty cool grill on that. Yeah, see the uh, two voice coils. That's one cone. Too bad I didn't find the rest of this system. It looks pretty damn cool, actually. Ooh, it's definitely not supposed to be handling the bass. You can hear that thing flapping around. <laughs>
Wonder if that's a piezo tweeter in there. Wow, you can sure smell that thing. <laughs> Check that out. Oh, that port is fake. <laughs> really wonder if that's a piezo tweeter in here. It says K-Tone on the speaker driver. Hey, there's actually some foam in here. Hey, it was a real tweeter in there. That little capacitor was holding back all the power and doing a great job of it actually. And I'm surprised that thing didn't explode. Got some interesting square magnets. There was two magnets side by side on this speaker. You know what I should have done is put one of those coils out of phase and make it uh, work against itself. <laughs> Not a bad tweeter driver whatsoever. Too bad. I suppose that capacitor was holding it back that much. Like, <laughs> All right, I'm back. You guys probably wouldn't have even noticed if I didn't change my shirt and stuff. But as soon as I was finished recording that last video, I actually got a phone call and I was invited to a party at my buddies Dale and Melissa's. Or Alyssa, sorry, Melissa. <laughs> She's going to kill me for that. Uh, and so I kind of dropped everything. And, well, I'm back, all right? We got two woofers here. And we're going to race them. So I've got both these woofers plugged into an amp. And we're going to see which one will blow up first with the same signal. Oh, you know, I need to turn some more stuff on here, too. Oh, well, that woke the cat up. <laughs> Woo. You could, wow, smell them already. But it's more like the sawdust smell of the inside of the cabinets, I suppose. Let's see what we have for voice coils in these. Oh, ah. oh these are the ones that, oh uh, yeah, all the glue. Haha, <laughs> there's a green, <laughs> green voice coil in there. You see that it lit a little campfire for us. <laughs> I kind of, I was like, I couldn't believe it. I've never seen one have that kind of a flame. You know, that's still going too. This one anyway. Oh, you could just hear that fry. Oh man, I'm gonna have to turn my exhaust fan on for a little while. <laughs> oh no. Okay, turn that down. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, seen the coil go flying. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> yeah, there's a lot of copper in that. <laughs> Time to check out a couple of these LG Pod satellite speakers. I actually went and took one apart to see what was going on here, see what we're dealing with. There's a little bit of foam in there. Really low density, that wouldn't do much. <laughs> 4 ohm, 30 watts. From the back, you can actually see the surround on these. They did a pretty good job of tucking it in there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white paint to these things to, uh, you know, get the focus point. That one fried. Oh, what's this now? Damn, this one went too. Let's bust into a subwoofer here. Oh, she's dusty. Bent the driver a little bit there. It's all good. Wonder how low this thing goes. That's 10 hertz. <laughs> These are, uh, yeah. Let's uh, turn that down so we don't explode it right away. See what's the actual lowest usable frequency in this cabinet? 
So I wired up this weird soundbar thing with the three channels. <laughs> I just can't get over the wires. That, like underneath your TV, you're gonna have three wires, even if they're the small ones. That's a little ridiculous. <laughs> So out of all the ports, just one of these is fake. Yeah. Well, it definitely looks like the cabinets are separated. Judging by the plumes of smoke. <laughs> All right, let's check out this RCA thing here. Eight ohms, 50 to 100 watts. All right, let's hear how low this thing goes. You really hear that thing flapping. So I'd say this thing only performs 50 hertz and up. <laughs> so there's 30 hertz, you can really hear all that uh, port turbulence. I just found 20 bucks in my garbage can. Wonder who the heck lost that. That's odd. <laughs> ah, miss. <laughs> Things labeled East Tech. <laughs> Looks like I bashed the wrong side away. It fires into the sealed side. Make you a little display window here. Nice looking driver in there. Let's just give it a little bit of a vent here.
there it goes. Finally, I'm like, am I going to have to turn this up? <laughs> Man, that got loud, though. <laughs> Jeez. Good puff of smoke. <laughs> That copper's stuck in there good, man. Let's check out this Legend 8-inch woofer. <laughs> Pretty dusty. Cool dust cap on there. So this was out of one of my DIY boom boxes, and I think I half blew it up. We're going to see. Seems like it's working fine now. What the heck? They get quite a bit of excursion from this thing. Oh, I'm seeing the smoke already. Oh yeah, you can definitely tell that's a nice vintage smell. <laughs> Made in the Philippines. I don't know if I've ever got Filipino smoke before, but <laughs> it's um, a little different. It's got a tangy taste to it. <laughs> ah. I still got that generator going. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, I seen it sparking in here. Really? I hate when they end like that. <laughs> now that thing could move though. <laughs> As if. Oh, oh there we go. 
<laughs> the coil folded right in there. Shorten the amp out. <laughs> oh. Oh, the magnet is nice and warm on here. See what I mean? <laughs> it pushed out so far that the uh, coil actually sort of dimpled in on itself. I don't know how you describe that. I'm a little mesmerized by the smoke puffs here. <laughs> yeah, nice and warm. <laughs> that thing was a champion. A little smoke coming out. <laughs> Whoa, stinky. Yeah. Oh, I heard it go for a second. <laughs> oh, those smell. Let's try messing with a pair of these Samsung things. Well, you can really hear those buzz. <laughs> I got the gain on the amp cranked up pretty good. I like the design of these, funny enough cute little <laughs> god that's cute that's friggin funny they need a tweeter though definitely oh. whoops <laughs> things are troopers man wow they'd be awesome with tweeters I bet <laughs> oh my amp went into protect let's see if it uh, kicks back in oh done for oh there's little ports on the back wow they're actually puffing smoke out pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one's stuck in. <laughs> yeah, it looks like this coil's stuck inside. I only got a little bit of copper out. <laughs> Good magnet size on the back of these. <laughs> oh no so yeah I don't know if you guys see me fixing stuff much but I'm gonna take a couple 
strands of copper out of this and just try to uh, connect that tinsel lead again. There we go. Jeez. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> Does that song ever go low? Yeah, that was totally worth fixing so I could destroy that. <laughs> All right, so because this is like a wireless thing, I'm going to have to break into it and get uh, that driver plugged in. Oh, I thought that was metal. Plastic. <laughs> Pretty beefy amplifier board on this thing though. All right, let's start this off on 30 hertz. A lot of turbulence on that thing. Right. 20. It performs kind of. 30. 40, you're starting to hear that tone definitely. 50 hertz. 60. So just like the other cheaper ones, it's only performing 50 and 60 hertz uh, very well. And then everything else is pretty silent with a bunch of turbulent noise which is what I what I call turbulence this mechanical noise you're hearing out of like things blowing around and all that the old 10 Hertz going see how far this thing moves pretty far <laughs> Jackhammer. <laughs> Smelling it a little bit. <laughs> that is some heavy paper, man. <laughs> Let's leave that on for a bit there and see if I can get it going again. Wow. Holy smoke show here. Oh, a freak. <laughs> Love the smoke rings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh! My amp was still on and I saw the speaker wires do a big uh, spark show. That's definitely not good for the amp. Although, nothing I did today was good for the amp. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 
Come on now. <laughs> Look at the size of the magnet on that guy. <laughs> nice and toasty warm. <laughs> hey, we got some acoustic padding inside and a really cool port. Has like a, <laughs> a funnel or a snorkel on it. <laughs> the coil's locked right in there. I might not be able to get the voice coil out of this one. <laughs> Fried right in there. Man, that's heavy. Now this has two inputs on the back. I'm guessing that's for each coil of a dual voice coil woofer. I'm not too sure how big the driver is in here. Uh, the port is definitely fake. <laughs> Try to get this cover off of here. thing looks kind of familiar but I don't think it is really stiff what is this an 8 inch so I get to use both channels of the amplifier into one driver here let's see what we get for frequency response on this thing yeah it's definitely sealed there's 10 Hertz 20. Ooh, I'm really feeling that thing. Thirty. You know what? This thing's actually responding to thirty hertz. Forty. Fifty, it starts to shine a little louder here. Is that as far as it moves? <laughs> looks like a pretty nice one for like a home theater in a box system. Oh, of course, that frequency generator is still going. Oh my god. You can awesome puff of smoke out of that. <laughs> that thing was actually pretty loud, man. Beauty. <laughs> Look at that. We have magnetic protection. That's like a magnet that's going the opposite uh, direction. Polarity? Yeah. I'm like, what do you call a magnet's direction? Um. <laughs> hey, the box is actually braced and... Whoa, I'm burning myself through the glove. I had my finger on the voice coil. It is uh, super friggin' hot. <laughs> well, ain't that interesting. What's going on here? Oh, it's just folded over. Okay. <laughs> nice spider on there. Let's see the dual 
voice coil leads. Now this confused me for a second. I thought it was really thick steel, but it's just bent over. Oh, look at this. Pretty impressive for a home theater subwoofer though. So I'm down to my last three speakers here and I figured for the grand finale, why not hook them all up and uh, see what the heck happens. Now somebody in my community post actually said that this uh, tweeter was fake, so we're gonna see about that. You know, I think that is a fake tweeter. Actually has a real cone on there anyway. Really rattly. Plume of smoke out the back. Oh my god. None of our amps are. <laughs> none of our amps short circuited here. <laughs> Where's the porthole on this? Oh man, that was a good smoke show. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> What the heck is going on here? Looks like a real tweeter, but there's just no wires or anything. Actually has a cone on there and a backing to it. I'm gonna have to crack this open and see what the heck's going on here. So there's actually like a dust cap under here, but it's just too there's actually two layers of cone material in this hollow little compartment here. They went through a whole lot of trouble to make a fake tweeter here. That's crazy. And nothing inside, just a dust cap and then like a diaphragm sort of thing. Looks like a tweeter though. That, look, why go through that much effort? Just unreal. one of the drivers out of the center channel. A little cover came off. Well, I think that's about all for now. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give me a like, drop a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I truly appreciate it. Thank you for watching, everyone, and have yourself a great day.